interests of fighting the Cold War now began to take root in Washington. Above all, in the CIA, who were going to take it much further. They were concerned that the Soviets were experimenting with psychological methods to actually alter the memories and feelings of people. The aim being to produce more controllable citizens. It was known as brainwashing. Psychologists in the CIA were convinced that this really might be possible and that they should try to do it themselves. The image of the human being that was being built up at that particular time was that there was a great deal of vulnerability in every human being and that that vulnerability could be manipulated to program somebody to be something that I wanted them to be and they didn't want to be. That you could manipulate people in such a way that they could be automatons, if you will, for whatever your own purposes were. This was the image that people thought was possible. In the late 50s, the CIA poured millions of dollars into the psychology departments of the universities across America. They were secretly funding experiments on how to alter and control the inner drives of human beings. The most notorious of these experiments was run by the head of the American Psychiatric Association, Dr. Ewan Cameron. Like many psychiatrists at that time, Cameron was convinced that inside human beings were dangerous forces which threatened society. But he believed that it was possible not just to control these forces, but actually remove them. He thought that psychiatry should not just concentrate on sick people, mentally ill, but should actually go into government, that politicians should listen to psychiatrists, psychiatrists should be in every parliament and should direct and monitor political activities because they knew in a rational, scientific way what was good for people. Cameron had set up a clinic in a hospital in Montreal called the Allen Memorial. It is now long since closed down. Cameron took patients who suffered a wide range of mental problems. His theory was that these resulted from forgotten or oppressed memories. But he was impatient with the idea of using psychotherapy to uncover them. Instead, he would simply wipe them. Cameron used drugs, including LSD, and the technique of ECT, electroconvulsive therapy. It was conventionally used at that time to relieve depression. But Cameron was going to use it in a new way, to produce new people. He was really using it to try and um, change the fundamental function of the individual, to um, alter their past memories, their past ways of behaving, uh, and as, as I think he, he said at one point, it is to just sort of erase everything from their past so that you then had a slate in which you could record new ways of behavior. Uh, and so he used massive doses of shock, of people receiving several shocks a day uh, and over a course, of, a course of time, hundreds of ECT uh, treatments so that they were just reduced to a, a sort of a very primitive vegetable state. I don't remember what happened to me. Um, I was introduced to Dr. Cameron, and I don't remember Dr. Cameron at all. I don't remember any of that. They shipped me up to what they called the sleep room, and they gave me all of these electro convulsive shock treatments and mega doses of drugs and LSD and all of that and I have no memory of any of that N nothing in the in of, of that time of the Allen Memorial or, or any of my life previous to that all gone wiped and then having depatterned somebody or brought them down to where basically uh, nothing but the essential functions of, of the body were going on in terms of breathing and things of this nature. Then he would begin to feed material into these individuals, positive material, such that the brain would be programmed in a 
positive way so that the individual would be completely altered. Then he put these tapes under our pillows called psychic driving. He would, he would then put back into this empty brain uh, a program of whatever sort he decided upon uh, and the people like myself would wake up another person, I guess. In fact, Cameron's experiments were a complete disaster. All he managed to produce were dozens of individuals with memory loss and the ability to repeat the phrase, I am at ease with myself. And it was not an isolated case. Almost all the experiments the CIA funded were equally unsuccessful. Despite their ambitions, American psychologists were beginning to find out how difficult it was to understand and control the inner workings of the human mind. We had been really chasing a phantom, if you will, an illusion, that the human mind was more capable of manipulation from the outside by outside factors than it is. We found out that the human being is an extremely complex thing. There were no simple solutions. But you've just got to bear in mind that these were very strange times. The psychoanalysts had come to power in America because of their theory that they knew how to control the dangerous forces inside human beings. But now the psychoanalysts were about to face a high-profile failure that would lead people to begin questioning the very basis of their ideas. It began in Hollywood. The film industry had become fascinated by psychoanalysis and Anna Freud was a powerful influence on dozens of analysts in Los Angeles. They treated film stars, directors and studio bosses. Anna Freud's closest friend was the most sought after of all, Ralph Greenson. And in 1960, the most famous star in the world turned to Greenson for help. Marilyn Monroe was suffering from despair and had become addicted to alcohol and drugs. Well, when I walked in to dinner, here was Marilyn Monroe. Now, I made a picture with her called All About Eve. This is dinner at Ralph Greenson. Yes. And the only thing was that Ralph was trying to show her, Romy, I never called him Ralph in my life, Romy was trying to show her that uh, the way a family life ought really to be. So we were walking the dog after us. I said, what the hell are you doing here? I said, you never asked me to dinner. And he said, you weren't that sick. And I said, oh. No, he said, the point is just this child has no, no frame of reference. If she, in other words, she doesn't know where she, what the goal is. What Greenson did was follow Anna Freud's theory. If Marilyn Monroe could be taught to conform to what society considered a normal pattern of life, that would help her ego control her inner destructive urges. But Greenson pushed it to an extreme. He persuaded Monroe to move into a house nearby that was decorated like his own. He then took her into his own family life, and he, his wife and his daughter played at being Monroe's own family. Greenson himself would become the model of conformity. And so this, someone whom she regarded as important and uh, how she idealized, if he turned out to be a very gratifying father figure, she, her ego would benefit from that. That was the theory. And his wife and children, everyone was involved in it. They were strengthening the person. They were strengthening the mind. They were strengthening the agent that controls inner life against adversity, against insufficiency, against too much frustration so that Marilyn Monroe would no longer be a helpless person looking for love. She'd have enough love. But despite all his efforts, Greenson was unable to help Marilyn Monroe. On August the 5th, 1962, she committed suicide in her house. The suicide shocked many in the analytic community, including Anna Freud. 
and high-profile figures in American life who had previously been enthusiasts for psychoanalysis now began to question why psychoanalysis